Um, I mean, for instance, this, this setup, this, this sound casting process that we're uh, trying to develop is really a completely homemade kind of unit in the sense that all, all the equipment that we've got here, apart from one or two specialist tools, which are made specifically for sand moulding, um, the tools that we have supplemented the kind of project with are all homemade, made on the lathe, on the bandsaw, and um, generally speaking, simply made to do the job using patterns that are familiar to uh, the sand casting process. I set this up at minimum cost, oh, yeah. otherwise I don't think I would have got any funding for it. Uh, what we've been able to do is get a little bit of money to buy extra material, for instance, more sand, sieves, and one or two more tools. Because a tool like that, which is a specialist tool, is going to cost about £30. Wow. Whereas um, your builder's trowel will cost you four or five pounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it's mixing and matching some of the things which are readily available in hardware shops with uh, one or two, as I say, specialist pieces of equipment. Um, so are you still making equipment as you think you need it? You sort of, oh, it'll be useful to have yes, this sort of yes, tool I mean, does this. Um, I know um, that um, knives have been disappearing from the um, university canteens. Oh, really? They're yeah, actually making very good tools. Oh, great, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheap. <laughs> so, uh, so they're being put to good use, and uh, tools like that are kind of invaluable. And this is a bricklayer's tool, which is really used for pointing. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's very good for cutting channels in moulds, with a slight adaption, you know, sharpening edges and polishing a little bit to help them to uh, run through the sand. Relatively inexpensive, costs about £10 a bag. Um, I went up to the Midlands to get the first lot myself, uh, and um, it actually comes from very close to where I got it from, a place called Mansfield. It's called Mansfield Red Sand. And the important thing, characteristics are, about it are that it's got an element of clay in it. Um, it's been controlled in, its, uh, in, in, in the process, and most of the lumps of stone got out of it, but it is dug from the ground. It's not over-processed. Uh, and, um, you know, that clay element gives it the ability to mould it, to be moulded, to hold together and to enable one to make a fairly sound mould from an object. So you actually went up there together? Yeah, I didn't dig it from the ground. <laughs> I did, um, uh, you know, I, I have actually used some building sand myself uh, okay. and mixed it up with um, bentonite, which is a very fine clay that is used quite a lot in ceramics. So you can actually manufacture your own, you know. And, and in fact, it worked very well, worked very well. We're going to make a casting from a flat back pattern. The reason it's called a flat back pattern means that it's a single pattern with no extra bits to it. Um, Sand moulds can be made from patterns which are really quite complicated. They're made from several parts and they come apart and they go back together again in order for the mould to be constructed in the box. But this uh, example here is a fairly straightforward flat back pattern which is similar to these castings here. There's the pattern. It's got a flat back to it. And what's going to happen is that that object there is going to be moulded in the sand. This plane here is represented by the division between the bottom box and the top box. Okay? So that will end up sitting there. In a sense, We've got exactly the same thing here. Yeah. This object, which um, Jenny has made, is in fact 
a flat back pattern. Yeah. So, so the be... screw there is to enable this object to be lifted out of the sand, leaving the moulded shape yeah. of it there. So the slack's on there for... That helps, because the MDF, when you, when you work MDF, you get a slight furry surface. Yeah. And if you put that in the sand, it won't um, lift out nicely. So you need a nice smooth finish so that it will lift out of the sand better. The important thing about the surface is that it must not absorb any moisture. It must be dead smooth and the pattern needs to be designed so that it has sufficient draft, an inclined angle that is, so that it can be lifted out. No undercuts. Unlike the lost wax process where you can make an object out of wax and it really doesn't matter what shape or form it is. Uh, the process enables you to uh, make a mould and a casting from that material or from that form. Sand casting has certain limitations and in order to get the best out of your mould making without any kind of you know, um, impossible task of actually mending the mould, the pattern has to be made so that it will withdraw from the sound right. as easily as possible. Right. This is a casting from which a mould was made from a pattern that had already been um, manufactured. And what's nice about it is it shows that the actual thinness of the section in this process here, which is not much more than an eighth of an inch thick and in some places slightly less. It shows how fine a casting and how reasonable the kind of detail can be. And that, it's got a lot of work to be done to it, but nevertheless, you know, it's come out pretty good. And um, we're quite happy with the way that has actually come, uh, you know, being cast. These are the boxes, the top box and a bottom box, the drag and the cope. Industrially these would be made of metal, but that would probably cost about £180 if that was made from metal. And of course, industrially speaking, um, they can be thrown around, um, treated fairly roughly, um, and last a lifetime, whereas these boxes over a period of time will deteriorate. But nevertheless, you know, they function absolutely perfectly well for what we're doing. And the good thing about making them is that if you want to make something of a more specific size, e.g. this box here, which is a bit of a mega <laughs> brute, which we're going to uh, use fairly soon, um, has been specially made by Jenny and, um, and Bill for a little project that I'm sure you've got, you know, you're working on. A lot that of great, yeah. yeah. And of course we've got one or two boxes up here which show that, uh, you know, depending on the size of the object, you can manufacture them uh, to whatever specifications you need.